So when we're talking about quadratic attributes, right, we're talking about the different and various things that go along with the graph. So first of all, we have to remember that the formula for a quadratic in general form has an A as your leading coefficient and a B value in front of your X and then normally a C, right? And if you have an equation where any one of these things are missing, then you just plug in zero for that thing. Okay, so if we're in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c, we can find all of these attributes that we need to find. So first and foremost, we're going to find the vertex for our parabola, right? That is a point. Um, if we're talking about a uh, positive quadratic, which opens up, right, a positive parabola, the name of the graph of a quadratic is a parabola. So we're going to find the vertex which if it's positive is gonna be a minimum point, right? Minimum is at the bottom of this graph. If it's a positive equation, and if it's a negative equation, then your graph opens down, and your vertex is going to be a maximum point. Okay, so it's important to look at the function to see is your A value positive or is your A value negative? And negative quadratics open down like a frown, and positive quadratics open up like a cup because we like to rhyme all the time. So you find the vertex by applying a formula, and the x-coordinate is found by taking the negative of your middle term, right, negative b, and dividing it by two a's. So we're looking at the number in front of x, right, the opposite sign, so if this is a positive, then that's subtraction, and if this happens to be a negative b value, then you'll have a positive, because negative of a negative is a positive. Right, and divided by two times the value in front of your x squared, whatever your leading coefficient is. Okay, you evaluate that, and that tells you the x coordinate of your vertex, because every vertex has two parts, an x part and a y part. So then you find the y part by plugging in your x value from your vertex into your formula. Right, whatever your formula happens to be, you replace the x's with that x-coordinate, and um, whatever that number is, that's going to be the y value for your vertex. Okay, now formally written, that's negative b over 2a, comma f of negative b over 2a. Right, what is the y value when you plug the function? And when you plug the x value into your function. So this is formally how we would write the vertex, right? A minimum point if it is a positive and a maximum point if it is a negative. Okay, so the first part, the first thing you're gonna find, the attribute is probably going to be your vertex. The next thing we're gonna find, the next attribute is the axis of symmetry. Okay, so every quadratic has perfect symmetry that goes right through your vertex. Okay, no matter if it's an opening up or open down one, it goes right through the vertex. Now this vertical line has an equation, as all vertical lines do. And that is an x equals equation. So the axis of symmetry is an equation of basically x equals the x coordinate for your vertex. So negative b divided by 2a. Whatever we found over here for your x-coordinate of the vertex is the same thing that we use in your axis of symmetry formula. But remember, it's a vertical line, so it has to have an x equals as its equation. Where the vertex is a coordinate in x comma y, the axis of symmetry is a line, so x equals that number. Okay, axis of symmetry is what we would find next. So another attribute that we can find is the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is the point on your graph where it crosses the y-axis. And every y-intercept has an x value of zero, and then it has a random y value. So what you're gonna do is you're going to plug zero into your equation for x. And whatever you get after you plug in zero for your equation, that is the y-coordinate of your x-intercept. 
Okay. Normally things cancel out and you just get your C value when you're finding the Y intercept. So you plug zero into the equation for X and you do your simplification and that number is your Y intercept. So in addition to the L, Y intercept, we could also find the X intercept. And the X intercept has a Y value of zero. Now we're gonna solve this somehow. So you're going to either factor to solve your equation or you could use your quadratic formula if it's not factorable. So heaven pray that it's going to be factorable. Or you could complete the square as another algebraic way to solve this for x if your equation is so um, needing. So the easiest way would be to factor and solve, but you could also quadratic formula and complete the square in order to get x by itself. Okay, there could be one x-intercept, there could be two x-intercepts, or there could be no x-intercepts for your quadratic, depending on how many times it crosses the x-axis. Okay, so the last thing that we could talk about is finding the range, the range of values. So that's going to be a y part, is finding the range, right? The domain of all quadratics is all reals. There are no restrictions on a domain for quadratics. Now the range, right? If we had a positive quadratic that opened up, the range would go from that y value of your vertex all the way up to infinity, right? The range are the possible y values. So the smallest thing that y is going to be is the y value of your vertex, right? And then y is only going to get larger. So we would write it with a bracket, bracket, comma, whatever the y value is of your vertex from before, comma, infinity, because y's are getting really, really large. Okay, but it has a minimum value, right? A smallest is gonna be whatever the y is at that coordinate of your vertex. So we use the vertex for lots of things. Pro, what about if we had a negative graph, right? The parabola that opens down, so your vertex is now going to be a maximum point, and your range is going to be from negative infinity to whatever that y value is of your vertex. Okay, so a negative graph starts at negative infinity, and it comes up to a maximum value of whatever the y is at your vertex. So the vertex is a pretty important point when it comes to the attributes of quadratics. Okay, we use it to find, uh, well, the x-coordinate or the y-coordinate. We use it for um, maxes and mins, and we use it for ranges. Okay, so those are some things to find when we're talking about attributes of quadratics. Okay, so let's do a couple of examples and see if we can put this into practice. So let's look at this quadratic to start. Now notice it's not in standard form, right? This is in factored form, we have something in parentheses. So what we're going to do first is write it in standard form so we can use all of our wonderful formulas. So squaring everything out gives x squared minus 4x plus 4 as our quadratic in standard form. Because your a and your b and your c come from standard form, not from any other form. So now that we have it like this, we can figure out what our vertex is. Okay, so first we find the x-coordinate by using our formula, the negative of b divided by 2 times a. So our b value is negative 4, so the negative of negative 4 divided by 2 times 1, right? You don't see a number in front of x squared, but we can assume it's 1 because there's one of them. And now we just have to uh, math this out. So the negative of negative 4 is positive 4 divided by 2 is 2. So our x-coordinate of our vertex is 2. And what about the y-coordinate? Well, we'd find the y-coordinate by plugging 2 back into your original formula. So you could either go into, well, <laughs> really, you can go into either one. We could go into this formula, or we could go into that one, right? The factored or the standard. So we're plugging it into the standard because I forgot about the other one. So 4 minus 8 plus 4 turns out to be 0. Okay, so the vertex of this thing is at the point 2 comma 0. 
So now that we have the vertex, we can answer a lot of the other questions, like the axis of symmetry question. Okay, the axis of symmetry, or AOS, just for shorthand, is the equation x equals 2. It is the same value as your x-coordinate of your vertex, but written as a linear equation form. So x equals 2 is the equation of a vertical line that passes through 2. Okay, how about the y-intercept? If we plug in 0 for x, so 0 minus 2 squared, 0 minus 2 is negative 2, negative 2 squared is positive 4. So the y-intercept is the point 0, comma, 4. Okay, how about the x-intercepts? So it's already factored, so we take our factor and set it equal to 0. So x minus 2 equals 0, so we're going to have only one x-intercept. So we have an x-intercept at the point 2, comma, 0. So although x equals 2, we want to write it as a point because an intercept is a coordinate point. So the x-intercept is 2, comma, 0. So this one only has one x-intercept. And the last thing we can talk about, I guess maybe not the last thing, but next thing is the range. So remember this looks like it was a positive quadratic, right? Positive x minus 2 squared, or a positive x squared minus 4x plus 4. So that means that we have a minimum value on your parabola. And this was the point uh, 2 comma 0. So because we have a minimum point, the y-coordinate is going to be the smallest on the left. And it will increase until you get to infinity. So the range of this parabola, x minus 2 squared, is from 0 to infinity. Okay, which means the minimum value for our whole entire equation is going to be 0. We're never going to have a y value less than 0. Okay, so the minimum value is going to be 0 because the smallest y happens to be 0. Okay, shall we do another one? So let's find all the attributes of this one once again. Okay, so we're going to start with the x-coordinate of the vertex. So to find the y, we plug in negative 2 in for all of our x's. And now we have a PEMDAS situation where we have to remember which ones to do first. And we get a y value of negative 1. So that means I have a vertex at negative 2 and negative 1. Okay, so from this we can get the majority of our information like your axis of symmetry. x equals negative 2, the equation of your line through the x-coordinate of your vertex. Okay, we can find the um, y-intercept by plugging in 0 for all the x's, which leaves us with just a negative 5 after all these other things go away. So we have a y-intercept at the point 0, comma negative 5. So knowing our vertex can help us find the range. Okay, we have a negative quadratic, so this thing is going to open down, which means our graph is going to have a maximum value at the vertex of negative 2, negative 1. So we have a range from, wait, parentheses, negative infinity to negative 1, the y value at your vertex. Okay, so this is the range. It's a negative quadratic, so it goes like that. Okay, next let's find the x-intercepts. So to find the x-intercepts, we're going to factor our original quadratic. Now, don't get upset with me when I pull out a negative, because I don't like factoring with a negative x. So we're going to make everything else change signs so that we can figure this out. So the negative of 
x squared plus 4x plus 5. Okay, so are there any factors that multiply to give us positive 5 and add to give positive 4? Okay, and when you think about it, right, we're not going to have any. There are no numbers that multiply to give us positive 5, but then add to give positive 4. Okay, 5 times 1 is 5, but 5 plus 1 is 6, and that is our only thing. So in other words, this is not factorable, and chances are this isn't going to have any x-intercepts. Okay, so we can check that by looking at the determinants, or the discriminant negative b minus 4ac. Nope, not negative b squared, positive b squared minus 4ac. Okay, so if we do that, we get negative 4 squared minus 4 times negative 1 times negative 5. Okay, and 16 minus 20 is a negative 4. So because we have a negative discriminant, you know that there's going to be two imaginary solutions. In other words, no real solutions. This graph does not cross the y-axis. Okay? So it has a vertex at negative 2, negative 1, and it doesn't cross the x-axis. So there are no x-intercepts. I know that's not very satisfying. We want to have x-intercepts, but this one is mathematically not able to do that.